I want to thank all of you for showing up. Uh, I, don't know, I don't think you know exactly what you're getting in for here. Uh, does it, is anyone here familiar with this method? Well, I discovered this not on my own, but by accident. A student told, I was helping a student to do factory, and they were doing it this way. I said, man, that doesn't, are you sure that always works? Yeah, that's how somebody taught them. So I don't even know where it originated. But I'm gonna go through one example and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. And if you've got some questions, uh, please feel, feel free to ask, ask questions. And uh, I've got a, what I'm putting up here, I've got one sheet for each of you so you don't have to take any notes. And anyway, that's just sort of a little introduction. And what we're going to do, we're going to take, start with the quadratic trinomial with integer coefficients. And the one I have here is 120 x squared plus 170x plus 60. We want to factor that over the integers. Well, I think that the first step that you should always do, you remember in factoring, is to take out the greatest common factor. So there's a problem again, write it down again, and we take out the 10. That was not hard to see that that's going to be the only common factor. You got the 12 and the 17 and the 6. Okay. Okay, now this method, that's the first step if you're, if you're learning this method. Now the next method, the next step is sort of a peculiar method thing. Uh, you see that 12 right there? We're just going to take it and put it right up here and multiply it times the 6 and get 72, but we're not changing the middle term. It just stays where it was. That's all that's changed. Okay, now the next time, the next step, am I doing this right? Right, okay. And then we're gonna take this step right here. I'll just, I'll just do it right, read, it, read it from here. We're gonna divide this 12, this one, this is the 12, we're gonna divide this one by 12, get one, and multiply this one to compensate. You know, when you divide, you multiply. This is hocus pocus now. Okay, we're going to multiply this one by 12, we get 72. Okay, so what I've done is just take, the, now, if you notice, these two things are not the same. You can't put equals in, in, in there, right? Now, this is the way they do this. And, uh, okay, so the next step we get here, now this one right here, this part, x squared plus 17x plus 72. If you see that the, uh, uh, a nine times eight and add to 17, that's an easy to, fa to factor that as x plus nine, x plus eight. So that's the easy step. That factoring, that is very easy. But now, to compensate for all this we've done up here, uh, we're gonna divide, we're gonna divide this one by, by 12, and we're gonna divide that one by 12. We use that 12 up there twice. You recall that? Okay. So we're going to divide this one by 12, the 9 by 12, and the 8 by 12, and let's leave some fractions, which is not good. We've got 9 over 12, 8 over 12. So let's reduce the fractions. Always reduce fractions. Okay, we reduce 9 over 12 gets you 3 fourths. 8 over 12 is 2 thirds. Okay, we don't want any fractions because we're going to factor this over the integers. So this four, let's multiply this one by four, you get four x plus three, and you multiply this one by three to get three x plus two, and then we're gonna check our answer. Okay, when you foil this or thing it back, you get 12 times 10 is 120. We've got an eight plus nine is 17 times 10 is 170. Three times two is six times 10 is 60. And you got it factored. Now, actually, this is the easiest way for students to factor these. It, it, there's, there's some, there are some things going on here. And so this is a, if a person is curious, you say, hey, well, how did that work? What's going on? Why does this work? 
Well, it's a lot better for you to figure that out for yourself. <laughs> and uh, that's what I before I go any further, have I made that clear how, what the method is, how you do this? Okay, but before we do any further, let me give you a copy of this. And you can, I know you can't see it back there. And uh, everybody take one copy of this. It's just exactly what I've got here. Maybe pass, pass some back. And Now this may become one of the most popular methods, new methods for factoring that that you can imagine. It's, it may become so famous that this, all the students will do this in the future. But I don't know that. <laughs> okay, now first thing after you see this, you're reading it, does anybody have any questions? I may not answer all the questions because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who wants to answer these for themselves. So I'm open to questions right now if you have Yes, sir. I was wondering, um, what possible uses could this be employed for? Well, it, the, the main use, you teach people to factor who never could factor before. And they like it. And they enjoy it, it so they could used to pass their math courses and get ready for the next math course. They do this in college algebra, remedial courses. That's one of the things they do is factor. factor. You know, they have these methods for factoring. You know, the middle term splitting method, the fall, uh, reverse fall, AC method, all these names. But this one is the slip and slide method. And it's kind of slick. Did you have any luck with your students to figure this out? Why it's like this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it would be a good it would be a good thing for your students that even in your uh, that are going to be teachers for them to figure this out for them for themselves why it works theoretically now there's a little no, I, I don't want to say too much. But does it only work if all factors have uh, the integer coefficient in common? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is mainly the problems that. Uh, that are given in these in these courses, you you, have, you start with an inter, you start with a trinomial, a quadratic trinomial with integer coefficient, and you want to factor it over the integers. Okay, there's all kinds of. You remember in high school they give you 50 or 100 problems a night factoring. Okay, now a lot of these steps are not the are not equivalent, of course. I mean they're not equal. I mean it may be equivalent. I don't know. This and these these two steps. That's not equal. These are equal. These are not equal. These are equal. These are equal. And so you can't put equivalent. And you say, you know, I don't know that that always works. How many, just, I just let's just poll, this is a democracy more or less, probably less, but let's uh, vote. Um, how many think that this would always work? Are we voting today? <laughs> well, it's, it, this is a quadratic. This is only for quadratics. That's all they have. You know, like a quadratic, a quadratic trinomial is the only thing this is uh, was covering. You look skeptical. <laughs> I teach high school algebra and geometry one problem. Right, right, you're right. You know, I agree with everything you said exactly. <laughs> and we didn't set this up. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. So, did you have a question about it? No, this is, this is helpful. I hate teaching this lesson in school. <laughs> This makes it fun. And, the, and also the part of the fun is to figure out how, why it works. This is the fun for, all, for you, is why that works. Or is it just, is it gonna work sometime? Or, and I just picked a case where it would work. 
Did I pull the wool over your eyes? Well, I've got a reference here. And it's on the, see, this right here. And uh, this just is on uh, this, in the, this, this issue of the of, uh, International Journal of Math, Education, Science, Technology. It just came out, I'll say, just a few weeks ago. And uh, don't read that until you've tried it yourself. <laughs> I mean, give yourself a chance, but it, it's, it's a little bit, it may be a little bit more involved than what I've shown you, but this is all you really need to do this, pro, this process. I see I'm running over time. And, uh, thank you very much for showing up. Everybody got a copy of this? That one sheet? Okay. Thanks, sir.